today we're going to work on some basic shading. My name is Miss Leslie and welcome to my class. Today we're going to be using milk paint and this is a paint that I came up with but it's a great paint because you don't have to go to the store and buy anything. You probably already have food coloring and you probably already have milk. So it's about maybe, I don't know, just pour some milk in a container and get the colors that you like, the shades that you like. So you're gonna start today and we're gonna do uh, a lemon. And I really love fruit and lemons are like my favorite. I love lemonade and making drinks with lemon. So here we go. Here's my sketch that I already sketched out. And what we're going to do is um, I'll go over my sketch so that you can see it better but this is just the little stem at the top and here's a leaf and it is a little bit like an almond with a sharp point on the edge and this leaf has a little bit of the backside showing so we're going to do that and then lemons are basically an oval, but they have like a little triangular tip on the edge. And this picture that I'm painting from has a cut lemon and it has 10 wedges inside. So what we would do to get that is go paint each wedge and I would do three and then add the fourth and the fifth one on each edge and then I would do the same on the other side and you don't want these to be even you would think like that it would be even right but it's not so we're going to have each wedge be a little bit different. And then the inside really isn't all that round. It's a, maybe a little bit like an almond shape too. Now the outside edge, I'm going to add a little bit of orange just to the very outer edge, just to make the yellow kind of pop more. Not really to make it look orange, but just to kind of um, make that yellow come out. Now in the middle of each wedge, I'm going to leave it a little bit white. And I'm just going to bring this color that I already um, put for the around, uh, around each wedge. And I'm going to bring it in and there's like little sections of um, lemon. They're each in their own little pods. So I'm going to make little almond shape uh, sections. But I want to leave part of it white. And that's because that's where the light is reflecting off of it. So wherever you have reflection, you are always going to have white. And I learned that from a YouTube artist called Mural Joe. I really like him. He's a fun person to watch. So I'm not going to finish all the detail because our eye really does not like detail completely um, filled in because our eye likes to our brain or our, maybe it's probably our brain likes to interpret things so I'm going to make my highlight on this lemon first and then I'm gonna just look at where the other yellow spots are on the lemon and wherever it is yellow, that's where I'm going to paint for right now. 
So I have a main highlight and I have a secondary highlight. And I want to pay to preserve both but the main highlight I'm gonna leave white and the secondary highlight I'm going to just paint with water and then a little bit of the yellow from the uh, paint that I already painted is gonna fill that in and then there's another lemon behind and the leaf is covering most of it up. So I'm gonna still, I'm gonna fill it in with yellow and leave the secondary highlight there. The, the main highlight on that lemon is being covered up. But I'll do the same with this one. I will just fill in the area that's the secondary highlight just with water. And it looks like I didn't get the shape of this lemon right in the back. So I'm going to go over. I'm going to extend it out. I've seen all different shapes of lemon. So you probably couldn't go wrong uh, with whatever shape you think would work. But uh, just if you want... A traditional shaped lemon. Now you notice how nice it is with this little bit of orange on the wedge that makes that lemon stand out there. We're going to do the same with our lemons that aren't cut. I'm going to take a little bit of that orange and go along the edge and that's just going to help define it against the other lemon. And can't ever go wrong with doing your related colors. So for um, this lemon, a little bit of orange on one side and then a little bit of green on the other. And so for the green, I'm going to add that in where I see the shadows. And in the shadows, there's always a reflected highlight. So this is going to help um, add to the reflected highlight. So wherever I see a little bit dark, I'm going to add some green. But you're always going to have light in the shadows too. Now for the cut wedge, I'm also going to add just a little bit of orange to wherever I see, okay, that ended up being too much right there, but might be okay. Maybe instead of a Eureka lemon, it's the Meyer lemon that is a little bit more orange. So we'll bring this um, orange into the little cells of the, of the wedges. So that looks kind of cool. And then I'm gonna let that part rest just for a little bit. And I'm gonna do my background. And for this, I am going to choose blue, but please choose whatever color you would like. I really love the food coloring blue. I think it's so pretty. I'm going to add a lighter blue and blend that into the darker blue. Now here I came too close to my lemon. So I um, am getting some bleeding. So you'll notice with uh, this milk paint, maybe if your paint is wet, just leave a little bit of an area around it because it will bleed in. But since this is my background, uh, that's not really worrying me too much because I can do whatever I want to this background. So if it has a little bit of yellow in it, that will actually make it look better.
And then for what my lemon is sitting on, I am going to add just a little bit of red. I'm gonna add this into the shadow because the blue and the uh, red should make a purple. If you ever want something to look on something, uh, if you ever want something to look like it's sitting on something, you always have to add a shadow because there will always be a shadow underneath that. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. And then I'm going to um, do my leaves. I'm going to start with the light green that I have. And I'm going to put it around the edge where it's the darkest. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the leaf. I'm just going to do water on the inside to make it a little bit lighter. Now the back side of the leaf is lighter than the front side. So as I do that, I'm going to make it even lighter than my leaf. So I'm going to do this. And I am leaving just a little bit of an edge so it doesn't bleed. And that's okay because at the edge of the leaf anyways, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go back in with my dark green. And I'm just going to touch this edge right along here because it is darker right there. And my friend, she told me when she was a little girl, her mom used to make her lemon leaf tea. So that is something that I've used a lot. You can use lemon leaves um, combined with uh, ice and sugar. And you can make a lemon leaf lemonade, which is really good. Last night, I made a lemon, lemon leaf, sage um, tea. It was delicious. So what you do if you want to make a lemon leaf tea or a lemon leaf like icy, if you make the lemon leaf tea, you just boil some water and you let your uh, lemon leaves steep for 10 minutes, just like you would regular tea. This will be an herbal tea. And then um, you just take the leaves out, add whatever sugar you want or cream, and it is delicious. Now the icy, what I do is I add, I, I blend the leaves fresh off the tree in, um, water in the blender and then I strain it and then I add sugar so it would be like for four cups of your lemon leaf strained water you would add a, a cup of sugar and then some crushed ice and it's really good so in my shadows I'm gonna add blue because whenever wherever the sun isn't shining you're always going to see some blue. And especially underneath here, I'm gonna add that blue in. So to define our lemon, we can do one of two things. We can do a little bit more orange. And just on the edge, it's not going to read as orange. It's just going to read as your define your definition for your fruit.
And if you want, instead of um, painting like I am all in one fell swoop, you can let it dry for a little bit and then you won't get your colors running so much. I'm going to add a little bit of this orange into my shadow. Well, it's not really a shadow. It's just where the sun is starting not to show on my fruit. So I'm going to bring this on the edge of my shadow. It's going to be a little bit of red. So you'll usually have a little bit of red or orange right at your the beginning of your shadow and right at the um, end of your highlight. So I can see that um, I'm, I'm working with um, a little bit wet um, paint. So I could get into trouble, but we'll just keep going. The nice thing with this is just like watercolor, if we end up with um, something we don't like, you can always use a napkin to uh, blot it out. So far, this is looking great though. So I'm gonna outline this so that you can tell that it's more of a leaf. Love how the paper absorbs the paint. And then it kind of does its own thing, which is the beauty of watercolor, for sure. I'm going to blend this um, blue a little bit more into the shadow. We want it a little more purple. So just be careful with um, purple with the milk paint because maybe you're... Um, Watercolors will be different, but if you have a purple watercolor, it's so much better than uh, mixing your own because there's too much yellow in the blue. It will turn brown pretty quickly. So I'm still kind of wet. I'm going to work on this background a little bit more and blend where I'm starting to get like a hard edge in my blue. And with your background, you're always going to want to make your corners a little bit darker. It's going to help your eye focus on what is in the middle of your painting more, just like in real life. When you look at something, the edges are always darker because our eye does this super cool thing where it lights up what we're looking at. So if you want to do the same on your picture, that's going to help draw your eye in. So it's super cool to see how I like that. And um, just keep playing with stuff. Lots of times when we're copying something, it helps to rotate the painting. That helps us see stuff 